In this tutorial, we will have a look at a different tool that allows us to make mesh sketches uh, and create splines out of them. So what you need to do is in the model space, we're going to go down to uh, uh, the mesh option where it says create mesh selection. So here's how it works. When you push the button, you select the mesh and automatically by default it selects a plane to work from um, and it creates this object, this cut cross-section. So the cross-section can be moved in any direction, it can be rotated and it can be uh, um, relocated. So for now what we're going to do is we're going to place it back here. Now, if I wanted to change the plane or the direction, I can also say I'm going to use a different type of plane. So if I want to use the bottom plane, let's say, I can do that and I can do the same thing and then I can move it to a different location. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a different plane, maybe this plane over here, and then we can see how it affects it. So depending on the plane that you select, the sketch gets changed. So we'll just do a general placement right there, which is kind of at the back of the mesh. And we're going to do a couple more. So to do it again, we just go back to create mesh selection. Now to, in order for, to avoid having to go through this step, I'm just going to use this button to add it to the toolbar and this selection, which we'll use afterwards also. So I'm just going to go to create mesh, select the object, Make a second sketch. Make a third one. And a fourth one. So I can have as many as I want. If I turn off the mesh itself, you can see the results. So I have four splines. And you can probably see where this is going. I can I can make, if I connect these together, I can make a loft. But in order for me to connect them, I'm going to have to use this tool which fits curves to the mesh. Here's how it works. You select the object. And then we're going to use the, the tools that are here to actually fit some sort of geometry. Um, this is not necessarily an arc. It's a com It's a combination of arcs. So for instance, I can start by making an arc and if I place my cursor, it snaps to it and then I can go and place my first arc. Next is going to try to continue that and place a second arc. So I, I need to find the tangency points. So I can see that if I go too far, it starts to get off the part. So the tangency is somewhere along here. And then my third arc is going to be down here. So now if I if I look at my spline, I stop the sketch, and I can see that it's made up of three arcs. Let's do the next one. So here's our, uh, our next sketch. And in this case, I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to make my arcs. But one thing I do want to do, uh, let's start actually doing it from the bottom up. So it automatically connects. So the next one is going to be there. Now I'm going to end the tangency right about here. I'm going to continue down here and then go down this way. So this one is made up of four arcs, which is fine. I can, I can still work with this. Uh, and I need to stop the sketch. That's my second sketch. Here's where it gets a little bit trickier, the next one. So following the same pattern, we go here, we select the sketch. Let's hide the other two. And I'm going to start by doing exactly what I did before. I'm going to make an arc. But here I'm going to choose maybe instead of an arc, I'm going to choose a spline. So I'm going to switch over to the spline and end it right about here. Now, 
I only did half of it. So I'm going to do the same, but on the other half. So going back to the mode for sketching, I'm going to create a sketch this way. And then I'm going to make another one like that. And I'm going to leave it disconnected on purpose. Because what I want to do is I actually want to switch over to the tools. And I'm going to pick an arc, just like I would normally make an arc with a tree point. And here I'm going to snap to this point and this point, and I'm going to guesstimate where that curve should go. Now that looks kind of funny, so maybe what I'll do is I'll get rid of this arc and try it again, but from a lower point. So this is what we call design intent. I'm essentially using the geometry to base my decision to make that curve, but I'm not following the curve as it is now. Because what I'm going to do is, I'm, if I want to make that handle, that hole, I'm going to do it in a separate operation. This way, when I make the curve, it'll be continuous on the loft. And I don't have to worry about how to connect this geometry to the previous geometry on the back. So if I look at my other sketches, this will make a nice loft because it will connect to the back of this. So once I'm finished with that, there's my sketch. Then I'm going to do one last one, which is this guy. Uh, and for this guy, I'm just going to make a spline. I'm, I'm not going to worry about doing it with curves. I'm just going to try to do find the tangency points and create a spline object. There it is. Okay. So all of these objects have fitted geometry. So there it is. There's the second one. There's the third one. There's the fourth one. Uh, now what I can do is I can switch over to the patch because I'm going to make a surface model out of this. Uh, if I wanted to make a solid, I could connect the dots on the bottom and I can make these closed lines, but for now I'm just going to make a surface. So here I'm going to make a loft. Here's how the loft tool works in Fusion. Uh, I select one object and I keep going and I select multiple splines. Then I'm going to make my second selection, my second profile. It's here. And I have to keep continue I have to continue to pick the splines of another for it for fusion to connect them. So there's my second one. I click on the plus sign to make a third connection. So it starts here, goes there. I need to make sure that I'm selecting the splines. So there it is. I can see how it's growing. And then I'm gonna do one last one. Which is this guy. Make sure you're, you're selecting the right sequence so that it builds the loft as you go along. And that's it. So now we created a surface loft based on the geometry. Um, and it's actually as accurate as it could possibly be because, well, it's, it's very accurate in the sense that if one wanted more tightly fit to the mesh, we would add more layers, but it follows more or less the geometry of the mesh. Um, so the, 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 it simplifies in some areas, but it actually follows in some areas. That's it. I'm going to stop now. Thank you for watching.